My peoples, if you're looking for one scripture that will debunk Revelation 21 verses 12, it'll be this scripture right here. Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 4 and verse 16. The first three brothers are not Hebrew Israelites. They did not live in the dispensation of the Israelite. And verse 16 of Hebrews 11 tells us that God is not ashamed to be called these brothers God, and he has prepared a place for them, a city. What city is this? The new Jerusalem that John saw. These brothers, the Hebrew Israelites, does not have a clue what they're talking about. All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the elder Manatha Zakba. All right, as you can see here, GMS South Carolina 08. All right, subscribe and be edified. The title of the video that I will be responding to is One Scripture to Destroy a Hebrew Israelite. As the Christians that are, you know, watching. All right. You know, they're up late at night. All right. They're listening to the breakdowns and pretty much <clears throat> losing sleep on ways to destroy. All right. This spiritual great awakening that has taken place of the Hebrew Israelites awaken out of a dead state in their final captivity, which is Babylon the Great. All right. The new spiritual Egypt, as well as the various different places where they have been scattered. All right. You cannot detach the Hebrew Israelites from the Bible. And this is what Christians using replacement theology, all right, are seeking to do. All right. And in that, their arguments would only make sense to someone who is not learned in the Holy Scriptures. All right. Now, listening to this guy, all right, let's listen to his argument. My peoples, if you're looking for one scripture that will debunk Revelation 21 verses 12, it'll be this scripture right here. Now, let's see what he's trying to debunk. Let's go to the book of Revelation 21 and 12. Now, when you read this chapter, it's ultimately, all right, a fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, all right, being set up on earth as it is in heaven, okay? And we know the kingdom which is the king's domicile, all right, the king's dominion, which the king is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who's going to establish, all right, a nation of kings and priests, all right, and directly under him, the first disciple, the first king that will be established under Yahweh Shai will be our King David, all right, that's the throne of judgment that's going to be established on earth as it is in heaven. As a matter of fact, let's get Psalms 122. Okay, the set thrones. Psalms 122. All right, and five says, For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. You see, and ultimately, the uh, prayer is that the kingdom of heaven be set up on earth as it is in heaven. The order from the heavens will come to the earth. All right, and in times past, the heavenly father did that you know, through, you know, physical tabernacles and physical temples. Well, this time, as we're reading in this chapter, Revelation 21, all right, in two, it says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, all right, the elect, okay, who had been beamed up, changed to receive their reward. Eventually, they're going to come down to set up order on the planet Earth, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of the most high is now with men. See, it's just in times past, he dealt with us through a physical tabernacle, through a physical temple, which represented his presence being on earth. Well, now his presence being on earth will be fulfilled in the men of the Lord, the whole nation of Israel following. And it starts with the 144,000 under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But at the head of that will be the 12 disciples, as we'll show you. So I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, 
and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And the Most High shall wipe away all their tears and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, neither any more pain. All right. So the Israelites, all right, coming, you know, down from heaven. Okay. And the issue he has is when we jump to verse 12, how we describe that kingdom, how the Bible describes that kingdom, not us. We're just reading what the scriptures say, right? Revelation 21, as New Jerusalem is described, all right, verse 10, and he carried me away in the spirit of a great high mountain, which is a government, okay? A great high mountain represents a government and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending from God, all right, uh, out of heaven. And then it describes it in the order it's going to be set up. It says in verse 12, this is what Christians want to debunk. You know, they want to debunk that the kingdom of heaven will be ran by Israelites. All right. And this is their reasoning. This we're going to go into it. It says, and he had a wall great and high. All right. And had 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, the, the kingdom of heaven, all right, will be an order set up on the planet Earth, all right? And at the forefront of that order are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, all right? And the order is ultimately going to be under Yahweh Shai. You're going to have the 12 disciples, all right? The rest, you know, the 144,000. And that is the government, as this is describing. So at the, the gates is going to be the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, letting you know that the kingdom, all right, is for the Israelites, okay? The saints shall take the kingdom, all right? Let's get that in the book of uh, Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter, okay? Shall be given to the saints. Let's get Daniel 7. All right. Daniel 7 and 25 and the kingdom and dominion 27 Daniel 7 and 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him see all dominions all of the rulerships that were on the earth ruling before who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ return, all right, eventually they will be subject to obeying this government, this order, which is the set throne to David, all right? And if you go into history, all right, when David established order, the heathen were under him. When Solomon forwarded David's throne for 40 years, the heathen were under them, okay? It was a kingdom for the Israelites. Let's get 1 Kings, the fourth chapter, okay? When all 12 tribes were together, right? First Kings 4 and 20, Judah and Israel were many as the sand, which is in the sea, uh, which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and being merry. And Solomon reigned over all the kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines unto the border of Egypt, which is the promised land, right? He ruled out of the promised land. He started, you know, in the garden eastward in Eden, that's where he was set up. And ultimately, the 12 tribes, okay, were ruling and the heathen brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. So as you can see here, all right, the kingdom was for Judah and Israel, which is the 12 tribes, okay? And ultimately, this is the kingdom, okay, the throne of David, which our, our you know, our fathers have always ultimately cried to be reestablished. This is why when... um. Yahweh Shai was born. As a matter of fact, let's get that in Luke. All right. Luke, the, uh, let's see, maybe 1 in 34. <laughs> yep, 1 in uh, 30. It says, And an angel said unto her, Fear thou not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. And he shall be uh, called great and called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. All right. 
shall be an everlasting kingdom and it shall not be ended, basically. Right. So when you go to Revelation, OK, the 21st chapter, it's showing you a fulfillment of that kingdom. All right. Being established on earth as it is in heaven. OK, so the order of it. OK, is going to have a wall great and high and on 12 gates and at the 12 at the gates, 12 angels and the names written thereon, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. OK, so this is describing that order being set up on earth and at the forefront of it are going to be the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Showing you that it's their kingdom. OK, we, we, we never run away from the fact that, yes, heathen. All right. Heathen who are not of the 12 tribes of Israel will be all right in the kingdom. All right. But they will be under. All right. The superior nation of people, which are the Israelites. See, all 12 tribes. All right. Starting with the elect. All right. In their order. All right. Will be ruling on earth, man. See. And as you keep reading, verse 14 says, in the wall of the city, which, all right, the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb, meaning the 12 apostles of the lamb will take their seat. All right. As rulers. All right. Remember what Yahweh Shai told them. OK, as a matter of fact, let's get that in uh, Matthew 19. <laughs> In the regeneration, all right, which is something you're going to have to understand <clears throat> to understand how, you know, the likes of uh, Abel, Enoch, okay, Noah, and men, all right, who were of the lineage of the sons of God before we were called Israelites will eventually, all right, receive the kingdom as well. But what did Yahweh tell Peter, okay? Matter of fact, let's start at 27. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahweh Shai, Behold, we have forsaken all and have followed thee. What shall we receive therefore? Like, what are we going to get for giving up everything and following you and toiling and traveling and being away from our families? You know, what are we going to get? You know, getting, you know, talked about, being hated, you know. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You see what I'm saying? So again, when we read, all right, we can go deeper into that, but let's just get hit to the point. When you read Revelation 21, all right. And 14 and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb showing you that the 12 apostles of the lamb. All right. With the, the uh, first apostle. All right. And disciple being Peter. All right. Will rule in the kingdom of heaven directly under Yahweh Shah. He did not lie. OK. So they will. The 12 apostles of the lamb have their original order. All right. And when you get first Corinthians, the 15th chapter, right? First Corinthians 15. The order of resurrection, right? The order of resurrection, just getting to the point. First Corinthians 15 and 22, for as in Adam all died. All right. Even so in Yahweh Shai shall all be made alive. Okay. So Adam, all right, is very important to understanding this Christian's argument because Adam established a chosen lineage that needs to be followed, all right, that will lead you up to Abraham, that will lead you to Isaac, that will lead you to Jacob, all right, in the 12 tribes, all right? It's just that Christians haven't grasped, all right, the basics, the fundamentals of the Bible and what it's talking about and how to read it, all right, because... They are under a spell, all right? And then you have this thing called replacement theology, all right? That means not just the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are heirs to the promise of the kingdom of heaven, but all nations who believe on Jesus Christ, all right? 
you know, uh, you know, can have part in the promise. See? So anyway, we'll we'll get to him and we'll we'll finish it off. But it says, For as in Adam all dies, even so in Yahweh shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Yahweh Shai, the first fruits, all right, which is, you know, the elect men, 12, the 144,000, right? Afterward, they that are Yahweh Shai at his coming, all right? Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom, all right, to the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and put down all authority. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So every man in their own order, all right, under Yahweh Shai starts with the 12, all right, apostles, all right. Remember, Yahweh Shai is establishing a nation of kings and priests. So the first king directly under Yahweh Shai would have to be, all right, Peter, who is our King David, the first disciple directly under him who was promised, you're going to rule with me, Okay. Now, as you keep reading on how this foundation, all right, this kingdom is being established on the planet Earth, okay, let's just get to the point, all right, because the gates represent rule, leadership, you know, but Revelation 21 and 17, and he measured the wall there of 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that, of, that is of the angel. So ultimately... As you can see here, Yahweh Shai is going to establish, all right, as a matter of fact, when you read Revelation, the uh, fifth chapter, right, Revelation 5 and 10, and has made us into our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. So the order of how we will reign is going to be ultimately under Yahweh Shai, you're going to have the 12 disciples, okay? And then you're going to have the rest of the 144,000. That is going to be the government established. And after that, you're going to have a large multitude of Israelites that are going to be gathered out of all nations, kindred, and people and tongues, whether they be scattered. And we've already, all right, put it out there that many of the Israelites were scattered, even many of the Israelites that are here in the Americas, which this is a scattering will come looking like other nations, but they have one thing in common, all right, that they descend from one of the patriarchs, all right, Abraham, Isaac, all right, and Jacob. They descend from the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes. So basically what this individual, going back to him, is saying is that Hebrews, the 11th chapter, okay, cuts what we just read in Revelation, the 21st chapter, because these first names as you read in hebrews the 11th chapter speaking of the faith you know of our forefathers and examples of faith all right that are good to take heed to all right so the first name mentioned is abel now who's abel abel is adam's son okay in which we first hear of a sacrifice all right of an offering where ultimately Cain's offering was rejected and Abel's sacrifice or offering was accepted. All right. Abel presented, you know, the uh, his cattle. Cain presented fruit from the ground, which the Lord does not require fruit. He requires animal sacrifice. He requires blood. And this is ultimately the foundation of the priesthood and everything we had under that first covenant. It goes back. All right. To what we received from Adam through Abel, who was slew, all right, and then you have Seth and so forth. And this is what Christians don't understand about the Bible. So he's saying because Abel, all right, who was a son of God through the son of God, Adam, Adam was the son of God, okay, that's uh, broken down in the book of uh, Luke. You know, the Most High dealt with him directly, all right. This is establishing a lineage. That you would need to follow. So you see, by faith, Abel, all right, offered unto the Most High more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of, of, of his gifts, and by it, see, and by it, he uh, being dead yet speaketh, 
By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and, and was not found because the Most High translated him. And before his translation, he had this testimony. So these are all examples and things that we can uh, read, you know, to tie to what we're doing now, you know. Um, but again, before the Israelites were called Israelites, before Jacob's name was changed to Israel, okay, this lineage went by the name sons of God. Okay, so when you read the scriptures, yes, Abel was not called an Israelite. Enoch was not called an Israelite. Noah was not called an Hebrew Israelite, but they were known as the sons of God. You see? And when you go to that, because let's listen to his argument again. One second here. My peoples, if you're looking for one scripture that will debunk Revelation 21, verses 12, it'll be this scripture right here. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 4, and verse 16. The first three brothers are not Hebrew Israelites. They did not live in the dispensation of the Israelite. And verse 16 of Hebrews 11 tells us that God is not ashamed to be called these brothers God and he has and he is their God all right now going back here all right let's go to the book of Genesis all right and let's just quickly follow this chosen lineage all right um very simple okay you have Adam all right who had Cain and Abel Abel was slew, right? Abel had a more righteous uh, uh, sacrifice. Abel was slew, all right? The rest of this chapter goes into Cain's lineage because Cain had a lineage in the planet Earth, which I plan on doing a video on that soon, going back to the basics of the, of the scriptures, all right? Because a lot of people just read, you know, the book of Genesis, and it's just a bunch of names, and they're not tying it to what the Bible is talking about. You have to understand that in the book of Genesis, through Adam, all right, nations, all right, in, in particular, a, uh, a chosen lineage is being established. So after Abel was slew, who had a more righteous sacrifice, all right, how was righteousness, all right, and the uh, righteousness of the sons of God accounted? How would it be? Well, just going to verse 25, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth, for God said she have appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who came slew, all right? And I believe Seth means to compensate, all right? So as you can see here, righteousness was able to continue being flourished and, and, and pushed through the planet Earth, all right? Because Abel had a more righteous sacrifice, but now he's dead. So how will righteousness be pushed down? It will be through Seth, okay? Seth compensation all right the word to compensate all right means something typically money awarded to someone all right as recompense for loss so ultimately we lost abel all right who was ultimately carrying the traditions of righteousness under adam all right so we were compensated with seth okay so as let's read it again Genesis 4 and 25, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare his son and called his name Seth, for God said, she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel who came slew. Okay, so this is following that seed of the sons of God. And to Seth, all right, to him there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of Yahweh, showing you that through this lineage, men would call on the name of Yahweh. Okay, these are the sons of Yahweh. You see? And as you continue, the descendants of Adam, notice this is not, all right, counting the descendants of Cain. All right, this is accounting the chosen lineage of Adam, all right, through Seth, point blank period. Okay? Genesis 5 and 1, this is the book of the generations of Adam and the day God created man. All right. And the likeness of the most high. All right. Uh, God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. All right. The chosen lineage 
all right, would be called Adamites, all right, which, what was Adam? Let's get it in Luke so you can see it. Luke, the third chapter. Luke 3 and 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So these are the sons of God, right? And since Abel was slew, all right, we have to track the sons of God, all right, through Seth. Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And in the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begot sons and daughters. He had more sons. He had uh, daughters as well. We don't know their names. All right? We don't know who their mothers may have been. All right, but Adam was living as a king and priest on earth, okay? And he's establishing a priesthood, all right? The first priest, all right, to live on the planet earth, all right, as a man, ultimately was Adam. And again, the chosen lineage has Adam, all right, uh, Abel, Seth, and these, these great men that we're reading about to thank for everything that we have. OK, and we're forwarding. All right. Those traditions that were ultimately convoluted and messed up through rebellion, through a fall. But the Lord has always left certain men of this lineage. All right. And remnants of men and women that stuck to the traditions. Now, as you read, Seth had Enos. And we know at the time of Enos, men began calling on the name Yahweh. All right. These are all sons of God. As you keep reading, Enos begot Canaan, Canaan begot Mahalal, all right, uh, Mahalal begot Jared, all right, Jared begot Enoch, all right, who was mentioned in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, but Enoch belongs to this lineage, all right, the sons of God, right? He's still in this lineage, if you're following the Bible, okay, which this lineage from Enoch Okay, takes us all the way, if you keep reading this chapter, to Noah. Okay, and ultimately, what was said of Noah, the prophecy surrounding Noah, is here in Genesis 5 and 29, and he said, um, let's start at 28, and Lamech lived 180 in two years and begot a son, and called his name Noah, saying this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. So ultimately, there had been a falling away. Many of the sons of God, you know, uh, went left. They fell to idols. All right. But these particular men that we're reading about, okay, stuck to the righteous way. So the, the prophecy surrounding Noah was that ultimately all of our work and toil and labor will be comforted through this child who would survive the flood, all right? And as we were, you know, continuously being fruitful and multiplying, we would all come back through this child, okay? So Noah was that child that ultimately survived the flood, and that's how righteousness ultimately survived, through Noah, right? So if you read, you know, Noah was 108 year old, and he begot, well, Noah was... 500 years old, Salakia, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So as you keep following the, the, the story, we know that Shem would eventually be the chosen, all right, of Noah's son, all right, as the scriptures say, blessed be the Lord God of Shem. So as you get Shem, which means name, that very name that men were calling on at the time, all right, of, you know, Seth and Enos, is now being forwarded, all right, from Noah, after the flood to Shem. Okay. And, you know, just getting to the point from Genesis 11, when you get the tower of Babel, which the Lord broke up a rebellion against him. Okay. After the tower of Babel, the Bible tracks the descendants of Shem. Now there are other nations on the planet earth. All right of, you know, Ham and Japheth, but why does the, the, the Bible follow the descendants of Shem? Because this is the descendants, all right, that ultimately stem from the sons of God, 
that ultimately the promise and the chosen seed will be tracked through. So as you go through Shem, okay, you you eventually go to Arphaxad, you eventually go to Selah, you eventually go to Eber is where we get the, the name Hebrew, all right? But what the Lord is showing us, okay, which the name Eber or Hebrew means from the past, ancient basically, <laughs> okay? Eber, Ibar, all right? The region beyond, all right? The region beyond, across, all right? Ultimately, the legacy, all right, that started from before the flood was ultimately continued, including the language, the calling on the name of the Lord. It was all being able to pass over and to continue. The ancient way would continue, all right, through ultimately these men standing for righteousness. All right. So Noah had Shem, Shem had our facts at, all right, and other children, but the Bible was tracking the chosen lineage. Okay. So from Adam, we're, we're showing you and tracking the chosen lineage, which as you read this chosen lineage of Shem, it leads us, all right, all the way up. All right, to our forefather Abraham, okay, who had Isaac and who had Jacob. All right, so Abram belongs to the lineage of the sons of God himself. You see, he is a son of God. All right, but ultimately, at his time, at his when he was uh, born, his father, okay, had fell away from the customs. They were idol worshippers. So what the Lord did through Abraham was restore the righteous way. All right. And made a covenant with him and made promises to him centered around ultimately his seed, ultimately possessing all of the land and being as the sand of the sea, receiving the promised land, the promises and everything else, man. That covenant was then passed. All right. To Isaac. All right. And then from Isaac and went to Jacob from Jacob and went to the 12 tribes. All right. So all of the men we read about. All right. Before, because what happened with Jacob? His name was changed to Israel. Okay, now Abram was known as a Hebrew, all right, but the whole Israelite name was not established yet, you see? But these are all sons of God who belong to a particular lineage that the ultimately the Heavenly Father set up, all right, to bear his name in the planet Earth and to do things through them, you see? The chosen lineage. And what happened at the time of Jacob all right, he wrestled the angel and eventually his name was changed. Well, let's get, let's just get Genesis 35, okay? So all of those people we read about, you know, uh, you know Noah, Enoch, you know, Seth, Enos, they're all going to return, all right, through the loins and lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, and receive their blessing, you see? Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Okay, but before that, they were known as the sons of God. Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And this one, we became Hebrew Israelites. Okay, because Abram was known as a Hebrew, right? See here. Genesis 14 and 13, and there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, all right, Abram the Hebrew, all right, so Abram was a Hebrew, all right, so they were known as sons of God, they were known as Hebrews, all right, and so forth, but this 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 word Hebrew is what? Ibaria, or Ibar, one from beyond, okay, from the region beyond, all right, one of the sons of God. All right, a designation of the patriarch of the Israelites. There you go. Okay, a designation of the patriarchs of the Israelites. The patriarch of the Israelites were called Hebrews, all right, or sons of God before they were called Israelites. Point blank, period. All right, and the root word is Eber or I Ibar, the same thing. All right, so what the Bible is letting you know is that Abraham is one of those. He's one of these particular, he's a member of this particular family. 
all right, that ultimately stems from Noah through Shem, through our facts at point blank period. So before the Israelites were called Israelites, they were called the sons of God or Hebrews. Okay. Now there's many nations that can say, well, we're Hebrew or we had the language of Hebrew, right? But the Hebrew Israelites, okay, the Hebrews uh, that are accounted for the chosen seed would have to come through these men that we're reading about. So the Heavenly Father is dealing with a lineage. Now, let's get the, uh, something else I had. Let's get Genesis, the third chapter, and this follows it as well. Or second Edges, the third chapter, Salakia. Still trying to catch up, get away from that jet lag. But uh, speaking of Adam, I'll just get to the point. Verse 7. And unto him thou gave us a commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed, and immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations of who came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. Okay, so the nations and tribes and kindreds out of number will come from Adam, all right, but through Seth. See, they were given a righteous way to walk in, which they fell from. You see, it says, And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. And then again, in the process of um, a time that brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroys them. And this is the flood came when what? What happened and what brought about the flood was that ultimately the sons of God, all right, who were given that righteous way, which Noah was one of them, but he was remaining obedient, all right, got mingled among the heathen, okay, learned their works. And ultimately became demons that led to the flood. And you have to understand the lineage of Cain and the other heathen nations were in the earth at this time, which I'll do a lesson on that. And through following the ways of evil and error, okay, the Lord got so fed up that he brought a flood. But ultimately, as you can see here, Genesis 7 and, and 1, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark, for I have seen righteousness in thee before me in this generation. You see, so ultimately with Noah, the Lord found favor and he received grace, okay, amongst the, the rebellion that was going on amongst the sons of God, okay, the chosen lineage, all right, Noah stuck to the righteous way. He continued that righteous way and sacrifice in Methuselah. <laughs> all right, the oldest of the lineage of the sons of God, he passed away the year of the flood when you add it up. And basically, none of the righteous died in the flood, all right? But Noah was able to continue those traditions, okay? But as you read here, again, as it's following this chosen lineage, okay? Let's read it again. Verse 8, and every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. And again, in the process of time, thou brought us the flood in the world and destroyed them. That came through our people going off. Okay. It's speaking of the physical descendants of Adam through Seth. All right. They eventually, a lot of them started to go off. But the Lord gave you the names of the men who stuck to the right way, leading up to Noah, in which through Noah, all of the righteousness that those men had done, all right, their works ultimately will be continued and they will be comforted, okay? And they knew and understood that. So in the process of time, thou brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyed them. And it came to pass, all right, and every one of them as death was to Adam, so was the flood to these. So the fall of Adam, you know, led to what? You know, us having to deal with the flesh and going off and that led to the flood. Nevertheless, of one of them, one of who? All right? One of who? All right? And I'm going to have to go through this chapter in the GNT. I was reading it the other day. But one of who? One of the sons of God. Nevertheless, one of them now left this, namely Noah, with his household of whom came all righteous men. There you go. All right? And that will be through Shem. All right? And Shem, through our facts, that will lead to who? As we're going to read, Abraham. So these are all, 
all right, members of the chosen lineage. It's just that they weren't identified as Hebrew Israelites. They were identified as Hebrews, okay, at one point, all right, but they weren't called Israelites until Jacob wrestled the angel and his name was changed. But they're still of that lineage, man, if you believe in the Bible and what, what we're reading here, okay? It says, and it happened that when they dwelt upon the earth, when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children and were a great people, they began to be more ungodly than the first. See, and when you ultimately track the lineage here in Genesis, the 11th chapter, right? Genesis, the 11th chapter, when you see the lineage, okay, what you'll find out is as you know these men stood firm you know after the flood they were sticking to the traditions you know eber where we get the name hebrew peleg i believe that's at the time of the tower of babel and you have to understand at the time of that rebellion of the tower of babel there had to be a remnant of israelites of the sons of god right before they were called israelites the hebrews who were sticking to the righteous way okay that's why the hebrew language wasn't confounded and we were able to continue calling on the name of the Lord from that point. You see, because at the Tower of Babel, the Lord confused the languages and broke up that, you know, attempt at a new world order. But the righteous righteousness was able to still flourish. But as you get down this line to Terah, all right, which was Abram's father, what we, what we find out pursuing a Joshua, let's get it real quick. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. All right, I'll read this in the NLT. Joshua said to the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, all right, including Terah, the father of Abraham. So the, the Israelites, okay, let's read it in the King James. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, because their name was changed to Israel through Jacob, right? Your fathers dwelt on the si other side of the Euphrates, basically, all right? In old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham. So he's letting you know that the Israelites are tied to these people. These are the fathers of the Israelites, right? <laughs> they weren't called Israelites at this time. But even Joshua is letting you know that these are your fathers, all right. Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. See, so again, we'll go right back to this. But when you go to Genesis, the 11th chapter, when you read this lineage that stems from Adam, OK, through uh, eventually Noah, through, you know, Shem, through our facts at eventually, as we're reading in Genesis or second Edges, the uh, third chapter, okay, <laughs> verse 12, and it happened that when they be dwelt on the earth, began to multiply and had gotten them many children they, and were a great people, they began to be more ungodly than the first. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. See, so again, going back to uh Joshua, the 24th chapter, Joshua was telling the Israelites, all right, long ago, your ancestors, your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates River and they worshiped other gods. But I took, all right, your ancestor Abraham from the land beyond the river Euphrates and led him to the land of Canaan and gave him descendants through his son Isaac, to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau, and Esau I gave the mountains of Seir, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. And it's, again, he's given them the history as well, but this is letting you know that the men that we read about in Genesis, the 11th chapter, right there shows you that there are fathers, they're the ancestors of the Israelites, it's just that they weren't called Israelites. But before these men, all right, this takes us all the way back all right, to Noah, <laughs> okay, which takes us back, you know, to uh, uh, Seth, 
All right. Enoch and all of these various different men mentioned in that lineage. Okay. Point blank period. So these are of the same lineage. This is why Joshua is telling them your fathers. All right. Even Terah. All right. They were going off. They were serving other guys. Point blank period. All right. And we broke this down many times. Okay, but again, this dude, going back to him. My peoples, if you're looking for one scripture that will debunk Revelation 21 verses 12, it'll be this scripture right here. Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 4 and verse 16. The first three brothers are not Hebrew Israelites. They did not live in the dispensation of the Israelites. And verse 16 of Hebrews 11 tells us that God is not ashamed to be called these brothers God. And because ultimately their works of faith, all right, ultimately accounts them as, as the true sons of the Most High. Not so much the, 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 the physical lineage because many Israelites are of the physical lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they don't have the works of faith. So they're not the Israel of the Most High. But as you can see, these Christians don't understand the Bible, okay? Um, Yahweh Da 1, Psalms 147 and 19, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them, okay? And that's when we got the covenant, the law, statutes, commandments, dealing with Moses, right? But before that, okay, people have to understand that Adam was the first to receive the commandment. Okay? The chosen lineage started with Adam through Abel, all right, who was slew. Then you have Seth. Okay? Those are the fathers of the Israelites. Those are our ancestors. You see? If you follow and track the lineage, the chosen is tracked. And, the, and who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ came, all right, from the loins and lineage of that uh, uh, establishment. All right, through ultimately Jacob's fourth son, Judah, who had a son named Perez, ultimately our Lord and Savior came from this lineage. So this lineage is very important to the Bible. It cannot be replaced. As a matter of fact, let's end it off here in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the uh, 33rd chapter. <laughs> and we have more in-depth breakdowns to that, but that's just something I like going into. And repetition, all right, is always good when you deal with Israel because they forget very fast. So a lot of you may be like, well, you broke that down already. Well, maybe somebody who haven't, you know, that doesn't have the full understanding who may be taken by that question and be like, damn, you're right. You know, Enoch wasn't no Israelite. You know, Noah wasn't no Israelite. Abel wasn't no Israelite. But technically they were. They were the sons of God, all right? And ultimately, before they were called Israelites, all right, that chosen lineage went under that name, either Hebrews, all right? Then they became Hebrew Israelites, all right? But there is a chosen lineage in the Bible. This is Jeremiah 33 and 24, all right? It says, Consider as thou not what this people has spoken, saying that the two families which the Lord chose, all right, uh, chosen he have cast them off okay and who was those two families as you read in the nlt the lord chose judah and israel okay which these are all the descendants of adam through seth through noah through shem all right all leading all the way up to abraham okay all of those spirits and souls are are, are, are always regenerated into that chosen lineage as israelites and it's nothing no one can do but see, what these people are saying is that ultimately, all right, let's read it in verse 24 Have you uh, in, in the NLT. Have you noticed what people are saying? The Lord chose Judah and Israel, then abandoned them. They are sneering and saying that Israel is not worthy to be counted as a nation. And that's replacement theology. That's Christians. You know, they're making this big fuss about us saying that we're Israelites, but they're ignoring a group of people over in the land, bombing and having wars, you know, to 
to uh, justify them having rights to that land. We can't even say it. You see? <laughs> Verse 25, but this is what the Lord says. I would no more reject my people more than I would change the laws that govern night and day, earth and sky, which is the sun, you know, and the moon, which we know Jeremiah tells us if the heathen are able to destroy those ordinances, Israel would not be a nation. And they're currently attempting to do that. Okay. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David's descendant is ultimately fulfilled in Yahweh Shai. They all came from Judah, right? It says, I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or my servant, uh, David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Instead, I will restore them to the land and have mercy on them, you see, and us being restored to the land brings us back, all right, to the land eastward in Eden, all right, which is Jerusalem, okay, Genesis 2 and 8, and the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, that's Jerusalem, you see, and that's the land we're going to, you know, return to along with the rest of the promised land, and rule out of that land, but this time in righteousness, as the scriptures say, in all, uh, in Adam all die, but in Yahweh Shai all should be made alive. So this concludes the lesson. All right. Uh, hopefully I'll edify any questions asked on the comment board. Shalom.